Praise the Lord. We welcome you this morning in the name of Jesus. Let's all join together in worshiping and praising God with the choir. God bless you.
honor that he deserves. Hallelujah. Oh, we worship you, Lord. At the cross, at the cross, where I first saw the light and the burden of my heart rolled away. It was there by faith I received my sight, and now I am happy all the day. At the cross, oh, at the cross. At the cross where I first saw the light And the burden of my heart rolled away It was there by faith I received my sight And now I am happy all the day Alas and
water you turned, water you turned into wine. To open the eyes of the blind, there's no one like you. None like you. Into the darkness you shine. Out of the ashes we rise There's no one like you None like you Our God is greater Our God is stronger God, you are higher than any other Our God is healer Awesome in power is 
Merciful God, I pray for those that are sick, that your healing virtue flow through them and heal them. Lord, at this time of crisis, let each one of our eyes be upon you, God, because we, you have assured us that you will never leave us nor forsake us. Even a time of this crisis or problem or whatever difficulties, as we come to you, Lord, we know that you are there always to take care of us. I pray for your servant as he brings forth your message. Father, I pray that you will anoint him, that thy word will bring forth fruits, and it will not go void. Thank you, Lord. I commit each one into your hands. In Jesus' name, amen. This morning, we have our assistant pastor who will minister to us the word of God. I hope and pray that you will concentrate on what we have and what the Lord has to speak to us this morning. Thank you. God bless you. Praise the Lord. Thank God for this uh, beautiful day. We thank uh, Thank Him for His uh, love and His goodness and His grace in our lives. And thank you that uh, it made it possible for us to be part of this service. And um, as you know, we celebrated or we had uh, Pentecost Day last week and uh, a senior pastor talked about Pentecost, what it is and what it means and uh, uh, in in our uh, in the church uh, this day and age, and if you if you uh, missed the service last week, I encourage you to uh, go online and uh, view the service, as well as the uh, sessions, the teaching sessions throughout the uh, the week uh, before Pentecost Day, uh, and I encourage you to view those and uh, and uh, get to uh, learn and get to know what. Pentecost and the Holy Spirit is all about, and so I will carry on from there. What what my message or where I will talk, share the word from, is is Acts chapter two as well. <clears throat> but this is straight after Pentecost, and as you know, Pentecost there were 120 uh, disciples or, or believers in this upper room, uh, and Jesus had promised. Uh, a helper, uh, and so they were waiting for this. And uh, as you know, on Pentecost, the Holy Spirit came in His might and power, and the 120 uh, were filled with the Holy Spirit. And then Peter stood up and and uh, and preached the gospel to thousands of people that were gathered there. And uh, and after that message, thousands, Bible say, says, talks about 3,000 people receiving Jesus Christ as their personal Savior. And so I pick up from there, Acts chapter 2, verse, uh, verse 42. And I encourage you, if you have your Bibles, if you could turn to your Bibles, and if you have a pen or pencil, just keep it handy. And uh, we'll go through these verses and see what the Lord has for us today. And before we go into that, let's all bow our heads in prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this uh, day. We thank you for your word. And, and Lord, as we uh, look, in, look into your word, I pray that your Holy Spirit will uh, teach us and guide us as we uh, dig deeper into your word. I pray that each and every per person, wherever they're watching from, uh, will, uh, will uh, feel your presence, will, will know that your Holy Spirit is there, and they'll open up their hearts to receive your word. Help us to apply it in our lives. Uh, today, Lord. Thank you. We ask for your anointing in this message. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So we pick up, pick up uh, from verse 42, Acts chapter 2, verse 42. As, you know, as, as I mentioned that after Peter's message, in verse 41, 
uh, it says that they gladly received his word and were baptized. And that day there were 3,000 added to them. And so if, if you do your calculations, 3,000 people got saved here and 120 people uh, that were already in that upper room. So we now have 3,120. And uh, so verse 42, the Bible says, And they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship, in the breaking of bread and in prayers. Then fear came upon every soul, and many wonders and signs were done through the apostles. Now all who believed were together and had all things in common and sold their possessions and goods and divided them among all as anyone had need. So continuing daily with one accord in the temple and breaking bread from house to house, they ate their food with gladness and simplicity of heart, praising God and having favor with all the people. And the Lord added to the church daily those who were being saved. I'm, I'm sure you may have uh, read this text or, or heard uh, messages over the years and, uh, and, uh, and uh, you may be thinking I'm preaching uh, or talking about this once again. But uh, today I want to dig a bit deeper, go slowly, uh, word by word, um, verse by verse, and see how this applies to our lives and to our church uh, at this current day and age. And you may be thinking, uh, look, this text or this incident, all this happened so many thousands of years ago. Uh, and uh, it, that time culture and uh, people were different, things were different. We have a different culture and, the, and different way of doing things now. But my question to you is, uh, has the Bible or has the word of God changed? Because the Bible says that everything else will change, but, the, but God's word will never change. So this applies to us, our lives and day and age, as much as it applied then. So as we look at uh, the first portion, uh, verse 42, the Bible says, And they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine. Uh, as, as I mentioned the background, so there's this new believers, 3,000 believers who just got converted. And they gladly received the word, as it says in verse 41. They were baptized and they were added to the, this group. And verse 42, they continued steadfastly. Some versions of the Bible says they were devoted to the apostles' doctrines or teachings. They, they, uh, they paid emphasis or importance on the teachings. They were eager to learn more and they, they took out time devoted. If you look up in the dictionary, they spent time, they sacrificed they made an effort in, in, uh, in, uh, in the teachings of the apostles. You might be thinking, why does it say apostles' teaching? Shouldn't it say uh, Jesus' teachings or the, the gospel or something like that? But you, if you look at the background, you'll know, you'll, you should know that the New Testament wasn't written then. And so these apostles or disciples were basically teaching what Jesus had taught them, what they had seen, what they had experienced when they spent about three years, odd years with Jesus. Day in, day out, they uh, traveled with him. They saw the miracles happening. They spent time with him. Uh, they, they heard his, the teachings from Jesus' mouth. And this is what the apostles were relaying to these new believers. Through the power of the Holy Spirit because the Holy Spirit had inspired these apostles eventually to write the word of the New Testament. And so these doctrines or teachings from, by the apostles through the power of the Holy Spirit were being taught to these new believers. And the key word there is they, they continued steadfastly. They were devoted in this. And the other thing that we 
see that uh, after apostles' doctrine, and they steadfast in apostles' doctrine and fellowship, having things in common, doing things together, being together, uh, they they spend time together uh, in in fellowship. It is important because um, without that fellowship, without that togetherness, doing things commonly, having things in common, it won't help you grow much in Christ. And so they, they did things together. The third thing that we see here that they, they were steadfast in was breaking of bread. As we know that Christ initiated this we call it the Lord's Supper, the communion, where they got together and broke bread in remembrance of what Christ did on the cross. And they were devoted to this ordinance, breaking of bread together. And the fourth thing that we see here in verse 42 is, and they spent time in prayers. They were devoted, they, were, they continued steadfastly in prayers. Whenever they had the opportunity, it wasn't just praying for needs, oh Lord, I need this, I need that, I'm sick. But these were spending time in prayer, getting to know Christ, getting to know, uh, drawing closer to God. And verse 43 says that then fear came upon every soul. Some versions say awe, reverence. And uh, when they saw and many signs and wonders were done through the apostles, and in verse 44, it says, Now all those who believed were together. It says again here, together, same as fellowship. And they had all things in common. In verse 45, they sold their possessions and goods and divided them among all as anyone had need. So we can see that this wasn't just any group of people just uh, to being together and doing things together. It was more about being part of a family. They spent time in teaching. They were devoted in the, in the teaching of the word. They had fellowship. They had meals together. They went places together. They did things together. They spent time with each other. Uh, and then they, uh, they followed the, the ordinances. Uh, they had communion together, uh, a worship of, of Christ. And all he had done and spending time in prayer. And because of this togetherness, people saw and they, 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 they saw something different, something they had never experienced. And because of the togetherness, God was able to do signs and wonders and miracles amongst them and through them. And, and because of that, people saw and they were believing and they, they wanted to know more about Christ and what was going on. And more importantly, not just, they, not just that they were together. If they saw someone in need, they saw someone who, ha who was lacking, they sold their position or they gave from their own uh, what they had extra and they gave to those who were in need. If you look at the background, uh, if you study the passages before this, you'll notice that this was a Jewish festival and, and people from all nations, as the Bible says, all nations came to Jerusalem to be part of that festival. So there were people with many languages and, uh, and races. So when the Holy Spirit came on these believers, they started speaking in different tongues. And these people who were visiting Jerusalem, thousands of people, they could hear these disciples speaking in their language. So you can tell by that that there were people from abroad, from, travel, they've traveled from far places, different languages in one location. And then Peter preached to them, they received Christ. They got baptized in water. They became part of this family, 3,000 of them. Different races, different languages. Most of them may have been travelers with less, uh, not uh, many things. 
less luggage. And so, those who were uh, Jews living or Galileans living in Jerusalem, they had so much love and compassion for each other that they shared their things with them. It was all common. They weren't holding on to their possession. Oh, no, this is mine. I won't share it. But they let go of their possessions. Some even went and sold their houses or properties to get money and, and, and distribute it among each other so that everyone had, did not lack anything or everyone had equal. And that shows a compassion. And I'm sure if, since they were so devoted to the teachings of the apostles, I'm sure one of their teachings were how Jesus said that, you know, when I was hungry, you fed me. When I was thirsty, you gave me water. When I was sick, you came and visited me. Those were Jesus' words. And I'm sure the apostles would have relayed that to these new believers. And so they would have taken that message literally and applied it into their lives and shared their position and looked after each other, not seeing themselves as higher or lower or anyone as lower or higher, but they shared equally and divided among themselves as anyone had need. And then verse 46 says, so continuing daily with one accord. Again, it says another version of having fellowship or having things in common, being together. It says continuing daily with one accord in the temple and breaking bread from house to house. So we can see that they not just met in churches just for the service uh, once a week, but they met continually daily in the temple and house to house. They went to with each other and to their homes, shared meals. They ate their food with gladness and simplicity of heart. With gladness and simplicity with heart, of heart. Meaning they did not have grudges or any uh, comparison or anything, uh, you know, uh, looking down on some other people or uh, saying, oh, why does he have that? Why, you know, why is he, is he being treated this way? Simplicity of heart, clean heart, no grudges, no bitterness. And you can see that they spend time together. They worship God. Verse 47 says, praising God and having favor with all the people. And the Lord added to the church daily those who were being saved. You know, the, the important thing to see in verse 47 is they were praising God. They found favor with people. So the important thing to note here is because of the way they were living their lives, because of the way they were sharing with each other, because of the, they, the way they were devoted in, in the things of God, people were noticing and they found favor with the people. They did not have to hold big crusades and uh, meetings and things like that to, to attract unbelievers. It was just they were living a simple life, sharing and caring, committed to serving God. And the Bible says in the last part of verse 47, and the Lord added to the church. So it is the Lord who adds to the church daily with those who are being saved. So it is the Lord who was adding to the church. And the believers were just having fellowship. Believers were doing what they were required to do in honoring God and praising and worshiping Him. Why is it difficult for us this day and age to have this? I'm, I'm proud that we here in Kino Assembly, we have regular teaching sessions. We we hold uh, Bible studies and, and leadership training and things like that. We have events and programs that, that uh, enable us to have fellowship with each other in our different age groups or genders uh, and, and, and interest groups. And then we, we hold the ordinances of Christ sacred and we, we are committed to that. We, we take part in that breaking of bread, the communion and water baptism. And then we have time of prayer 
we we call for prayers and we pray for each other we pray for uh needs we 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 uh make opportunities for people to come and spend time in prayer but why is it that only a handful show up sunday service there might be a lot of people here but according to this verse verse 42 they continued steadfastly they were devoted how devoted are we we can we want we we cannot blame the church or the pastor that or we didn't get the opportunity because this assembly creates the opportunity but how devoted are we in the things of god It, as I, i remember growing up uh, basically in this church and uh, we did not have phones or internet and things like that and all we knew was school home and church and every time we had opportunity school holidays or the weekends we were here a group of uh, young people we just spend time here and play and and then we'd have camps and we'd spend time in prayer and just have fellowship and and good fun and um you know we didn't have to create or make special programs or entertainment to get us here we would just show up and this is where we spend time you know just playing instruments and music and and uh, in, and learning things why is it difficult to have that nowadays now it'll be it'll be difficult to get young people uh, people to come and and just spend time doing things and getting to know each other having fellowship is it because we are too busy doing other things our devotion is is um is on on other things now our commitment our priority our importance you know this portion that we read you may be thinking oh, okay it's the church in our church we have all these teachings and fellowship we even have a compassion uh, uh project that we do where we uh, provide assistance to um to people who are in need and that is all good but do you know that god sees the church differently he said we are the temple we are the church individually you are the church and so if we take this and we not only apply it to kino assembly but do but we turn it around and f- face it towards us when we look into the mirror and we go through these verses again this in verse 42 teaching fellowship breaking of bread prayers how as a church individually are we doing this how devoted are we into studying the word of god in having fellowship how devoted are we when we time when it's time for communion how sacred it is is it to us do we remember jesus specifically asked us to remember what he had done for us on that cross every time we have communion how important it is is it to us and then in prayer when people see us do they f- have the fear of god when they see us our when they see our lives do they see um wonders and miracles god performing through us are we able to um release our possession to for the needy or are we holding on to things you know this uh covid-19 if it hasn't hadn't hasn't taught you anything about life this moment then i'm not sure what will teach you but what i've learned is whatever you hold dear whatever your focus is on it can just disappear in a moment's time a lot of people had their trust and their faith in things on their jobs 
on on the finances on on the government or things like that and then just like that it's all gone then what do you do how tight are you holding your position in those days what was mine was this it's not like they sold everything and became poor and uh, and uh, lived a very uh, poor life it's just that they they had whoever had extra for example if i have two watches and joshua doesn't have a watch and he's always late i would give one watch to him so basically that's just an is an example and if we had extra they had extra they sold their position to get money and then they would divide it among those who like remember these were people who would have traveled so many for so many days and they were they were in jerusalem they their homes were probably back from where they came from and they were living there and and so the people took it on themselves to look after each other and that is the compassion that comes from the holy spirit from from christ and they shared among themselves and they had fellowship they they uh, spend their time praising worship God, worshiping god and sharing meals with gladness and simplicity of heart and that is why the church was growing because god was able to move and perform signs and wonders and people were finding favor and it says that the lord added to the church and so through our lives are we able to shine the light of god people do people see us and find favor when we live our daily lives what do people see our our lives what does it reflect you know jesus talked about us being the salt of this earth but when the salt loses flavor it becomes good for nothing and and bible and jesus is really harsh in what he says when the salt loses flavor he said it's not even good for 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 the land you can't throw it in the soil it's not even good for the dung hill it says in the bible maybe cow dung or it's not even worth throwing it in there because when the salt loses its flavor it's not even uh, good enough for for cow dung or dung hill that's jesus word and so we as the salt of this earth we have to give an account and if you read revelations you'll see the letters to the churches and jesus and and the letters is saying that we are doing things okay but we may have lost our first love we we have forgotten our first love what we are, are supposed to do our priorities and uh, and we have been distracted we become busy more important things are out there uh, that take up our time whereas these first believers they they were devoted i'm not saying you every day you be here in church but what is our priority what comes first oh i'm having visitors at home so uh, i can attend uh, a prayer session um when i wake up uh, if the kids wake up then i I'll, i will try and come to church but but for school you are up 6 a.m and 7 a.m you are in the car but on sundays uh, or during prayer meetings or bible studies or youth uh, you know it's oh when i feel like it uh, things like that ways of devotion ways of commitment but these believers they were steadfast they continued steadfast simplicity with heart of heart they were glad happy to be part of this fellowship and uh, is a challenge to us as we look into these verses which we look into our own lives we ask for the holy spirit to to reveal to us where we've gone wrong where we've gone astray because if we if we are living our lives according to the word then we don't have to make extra effort in reaching to the, reaching those who are in the darkness 
because they will see the light and they will be drawn to it and the lord is the one who will be adding them to the church through our, our lives reflecting christ are people seeing christ in our lives are they able to see the love of god as we live our daily lives in all we do my prayer is that we will think about this we will search our hearts and we will um ask the holy spirit to help us give us the strength to live our life according to his word let's all pray heavenly father we thank you for your word we pray that you'll help each one through your holy spirit to to align our lives according to your word and according to this passage here Lord I pray that you will forgive us is because we have been occupied with other things and our devotion is is uh and not towards you in the way you want it is sidetracked or it, it, we've got other things that become more important Lord I pray that you will help us that we may focus on you make our priorities right in you and Lord that through our lives people will see that you are a true and living god and that they will come to know you as their personal savior thank you lord in jesus name we pray amen and uh <clears throat> we'll be taking part in the communion and i encourage you to prepare yourself as a senior pastor comes in and leads us in this communion god bless you i cast my mind to calvary where jesus bled and died for me i see his wounds his hands his feet my savior on that curse His body bound and drenched in tears they laid him down in Joseph's tomb the entrance sealed by heavy stone the side
thank you for being part of this service. I'm sure that you have been blessed with the message that was preached today. Keep that in mind as you prepare yourself to take part in the communion service. This is a very sacred and important service, an important time. We are obeying the command of Jesus Christ. On that last day, he was uh, arrested. He had desired to have the last meal with the disciples. And he sat down with them. And he had the meal, that last meal. And he, this was revealed to Paul. And Paul gives us the instruction uh, for this. He says that, I received of the Lord that which I also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he brake it and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same manner, also he took the cup. When he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do as he, often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you do show the Lord's death till he come. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup out of cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. For if we would judge ourselves, we should not be judged. But when we are judged, we are chastened of the Lord, that we should not be condemned with the world. The words are very clear. The Lord is encouraging us to examine ourselves, that we know why we are taking part in this sacred ordinance is to remember what Jesus did for us. He said, do it in remembrance of me. So today, we are thinking of what Jesus did. And also, we are prophesying that Jesus will be coming one day. He said, do it until I return. And so this morning, we are partaking of it. The emblems are over here. We're going to pray and ask God's blessing upon it and God's blessing upon you as well. Our Father in heaven, we thank you for this time and thank you that we are able to be here and remember the price you paid for our redemption. Lord, we, want, we come here in your presence with a grateful heart and say, Lord, thank you that you chose us and that you paid that price, you sacrificed yourself the stripes that you received on your body were all for us. The, the blood that was shed from your body. On that cross, we thank you for that, Lord. We receive that, your sacrifice in faith. And Lord, we want to thank you and honor you for what you've done. Lord, may help us that we may never forget the price that you paid for us. Thank you, Lord, and bless this communion. And we give you all the praise in Jesus' name. Amen. We thank God for this, and I'm sure I hope that you are prepared with the bread and the um, uh, grape juice to participate in the communion. Jesus, on that night, took the bread, and he broke it, and he gave it to the disciples, and he said, eat this in remembrance of me. This is my body that is broken for you. And friends, let me assure you that his body was like a plowed field, but he said, it's for you. And so when he took the bread, he gave it to them and says, take, eat, do it in remembrance of me. And so today, this is a very important part of our service, that we remember what Jesus did for us. And we take this bread and thank God for it and praise him as we partake of it. Let's all partake of this bread.
Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Then he took the cup and gave it to the disciples. And he said, drink from this, all of you. This is my blood that is shed for you. Jesus died a sacrificial death on the cross. And his blood was accepted by God and said that anyone confesses his sin, believes in Jesus Christ, that he is the Son of God, died on the cross and rose again the third day, his sins will be forgiven. He will be assured for a place, eternal life. We thank God for this, for this remembrance of day. We take the grape juice as we drink this. We remember the blood of Jesus was shed. And we thank him and praise him for it as we partake of it. Let's all partake of it together. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Lord. We thank you. We thank you, God Almighty, that you would love us so much. Not worthy. We don't deserve all this, but you still loved us. And you sent Jesus and Jesus died for us. He loved us so much. Paid the price body broken, blood shed, our sins forgiven. What a great price you paid for us. We thank you and praise you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, amen, amen. Thank you. God bless you. You have a good day. Thank you for being part of this service. I'm sure you are blessed by the ministering of the word of God. If you want to know more about Jesus, you can contact us. Our next service is E3K service at 5 p.m. God bless you. Have a blessed day. He shall return in robes of white. The blazing sun shall pierce the night. shall return He shall return in robes of white the blazing sun shall be